Hi, my name is Larry Jordan, and welcome to this Power Up webinar on Multicam Editing inside Final Cut Pro 10. Multicam has been in Final Cut since version 5, but what happened with Final Cut 10 is Apple totally changed the rules and added a whole lot of new capability, new speed, and new power. And it's showing you what Multicam is all about. That's the point of today's webinar. So let's get started. By the way, we have a new subscription service. All of our online video tutorials and webinars, and in fact all of our Final Cut Pro and Adobe training, is now available via subscription. For one low monthly fee, you get streaming access anywhere, anytime via the Internet. And as a special bonus, subscribers can attend any live webinar for free. This is a fast and low-cost way to access all of our online training. And to get more information, visit LarryJordan.biz slash subscriptions. So let me show you how to sync angles for a multicam clip, build and modify a multicam clip, use the angle viewer, and change what's displayed in the angle viewer, make changes to a multi-clip in the angle editor, edit a multicam clip in the timeline, trim a multicam clip once it's edited into the timeline, and add effects to a multicam clip. Notice here I have three angles to a multicam clip. I've got the right hand camera that's all the way over to the right, that's the C camera. I've got the left hand camera that's all the way over to the left, that's the A camera. And the camera that's in the middle is the B camera getting the wide cover shot. I also have a still image that's going to be the title graphic that I use at the beginning and the end of this presentation. And notice also that I have a small marker at the beginning of each clip. That marker represents where the clapper slate is. If we play this clip, that's right here. That frame where the clapper comes down, I've set a marker to. Now, the clapper slate's not required. It's a good recommendation, but it's not necessary. But I find it really useful to make sure that my sync really is on. Let's create a multi-clip with just these first two cameras. I'm in the event browser, and I select the two clips. Now, in this particular case, the video was shot with a Sony XDCam EX camera that shot 720p60 in terms of the format, and it's being edited in an optimized format as ProRes 422. Once I have my clips selected, go up to the File menu, go down to New Multicam Clip, and this opens up. Let's just close this here. And this opens up a dialog that allows you to automatically create a multicam clip. Let's just change this to uh, my multicam clip. When the audio synchronization checkbox is checked, what this means is that it's going to look at the waveforms on all of your angles, which in this case refers to a camera. It looks at the audio on all of the cameras and syncs the clip based upon matching the waveforms from one angle to the next. I've had mixed results with this. Sometimes it works great. Sometimes it doesn't. So for me, I'm going to turn this setting off and use the custom settings. Now we have more options. Angle assembly should be left to automatic. This determines which camera angle is going to go on which track or layer inside the multicam. And automatic is almost always a good choice. Angle clip ordering determines the left to right nature. What's in the top left corner? What's in the top right corner? How are your angles laid out inside the angle viewer? And again, automatic is a good choice because it's really, really easy to change. And I'll show you how that works in just a minute. Angle synchronization is set to automatic by default. And what this means is it will automatically sync clips. If audio for synchronization is checked, it automatically synchronizes based upon matching audio waveforms. I'm going to uncheck this because I want to spend a couple seconds talking about this. We can synchronize our clips based upon time code, where all cameras are running the same time code. This requires high-end cameras that can have a time code input signal or it'll synchronize based upon content creation date and time. Now here, it's almost impossible to get three prosumer cameras to have exactly the same clock down to the frame. It's impossible. But content created combined with the audio synchronization, content created will get you close and audio synchronization will, will get it perfect, is a faster way than having it synchronized based upon all the audio alone. Start of the first clip is okay, but I tend to use clapper slates and I tend to put markers on the angles because it's the fastest way to synchronize these. Now notice it says first marker. 
If I had multiple markers inside this clip, it'll ignore everything except the first marker. So you want to make sure that your first marker is your sync point. If you've got a marker before that, it's going to screw up the sync. In this case, I'm going to say first marker on the angle. If your markers aren't exactly correct, if they're within the ballpark, but they're maybe off by a half a second or a second, then turn on Use Audio for Synchronization. What this does is it gets the markers, gets you close, and then it looks at matching the waveforms to make it exact. In this case, because my markers are frame accurate, I'm going to turn this off. Starting time code and video properties, I leave all those at their defaults, but I switch from Use Default Settings to Custom. And what that allows me to do is it allows me to change from the default setting of surround sound to stereo. So I always make sure that my audio is set to stereo because very rarely do I need to do a surround mix. I'm almost always doing stereo. And Apple has the default set to surround, which for me is just exactly backwards. So we've given it a name. Leave the first two on automatic. Set the synchronization based upon what your synchronization needs to be. If you need to get it precise because your markers are only rough, turn on Use Audio and make sure Audio Channels is set to Stereo and click OK. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at LarryJordan.biz slash store and look for webinar number 64. Thanks.